There is plastic everywhere. It's inexpensive, durable, light, and can be molded into just about anything. A large portion of plastic is used to make disposable items, and that's why so much of it ends up in landfills and natural habitats worldwide. Not good! Recycling, however, is one of the main actions now available to reduce these impacts. It provides ways to reduce the quantity of waste requiring disposal. In some cases, recycling even creates opportunities to manufacture a range of products from trash. So it's a win-win situation. We have been into recycling, upcycling and repurposing maybe for the last 18 to 20 years. Uh, it, we came into it because it was a need uh, since many years ago of being careful about the environment. It was the need for people, environmentalists, that actually take action. Environmentalists that are willing to go the extra mile and sacrifice everything in order to save the future of the generations. We get the material from many sources. Trinidad actually is packed with garbage. We have uh, discarded products from the uh, private industry, from the manufacturing industry, uh, then from the households, then from the badly disposed household items that normally end up in the beaches, in the rivers, in the streets, and absolutely, of course, in other organizations like Swimco, like here, etc., where actually is when we do our best uh, relationship uh, effort in order to take care of those polymers that end up there. And we are focusing most of our effort in actually upcycling. Upcycling is taking the same product and making a greater value item out of that, and we call it the raw material. Uh, some people call it garbage. We call it raw material, but uh, it's interesting to note, we repurpose the plastics that nobody wants. In other words, the contaminated, polluted, damaged, painted, tainted, or badly disposed uh, uh, rubbish that will end up in the landfills, in the rivers, in the beaches, those that nobody actually wants because they don't have any international value, any resale value, or it's not feasible to process it, to reuse it as a raw material. Those are the ones that we actually take, and those are the ones that we use in our line of product to make, for example, you might be uh, uh, surprised if I tell you that, for example, this piece of lumber I have here behind me, okay, very heavy, very difficult to break, very elastic, very useful, is actually plastic from garbage. This is not wood, this is garbage made into plastic lumber. Then we have another solution, uh, it's called environment polymer sequestration process. It's something very complicated, but it's not, it's very simple. Uh, you simply take the polymers, the plastics, the garbage, the bottles, the styrofoam, cups, straws, napkins, pieces of shoes, uh, old clothes, glasses, anything you can find made with polymers and some other no polymers also that uh, pollute in the environment and you actually make an aggregate out of it. We make some little chips and we replace the aggregate. Uh, when we replace the aggregate, actually we will be using it as a concrete aggregate and in that way we're making these uh, beautiful concrete products. We use this product to make benches, we made this to make blocks to do construction, and we constructed many places, and we actually place our benches in all around the country. You can see flying tree benches. You may sit on one of those already. They are made with maybe 10,000 bottles, maybe 20,000 plastic bags, maybe a couple thousand straws, maybe a couple thousand uh, styrofoam cups, all that as aggregate into the mixture and this uh, beautiful outdoor furniture. We place it where it's needed for the public to use it and enjoy it. We actually use the plastic lumber, the upcycled plastics, and the sequestration process into blocks in Kernanham, Cascadoux, Plastic Upcycling and Learning Center building. The building was totally made with upcycled materials.
So you see, it really isn't a waste of time. And the next time you drop a water bottle into a bin, you really need to ask yourself, where is it going to end up? Recycling, repurposing, and upcycling and uplifting. And that, to me, that's very, very inspirational, that video there, be for sure, for sure. This morning, I want to welcome the National Coordinator of the Global Environment Facility uh, and the Small, Gr Small Grants Program of Trinidad and Tobago with the UNDP, Ms. Dr. Sorry, Dr. Sharda Mahabir. Good morning to you, Doc. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Not a problem. I... That video I just saw there, it, it really blew my mind because I didn't know that we could actually make things like lumber and concrete out of plastic. Now, first of all, before we get into, before we get into what we can and can't do, how long have you been working at, at gathering all the information that you have and processing it to make these fantastic changes happen? Um, I've been in the position of National Coordinator um, three years this year. And um, but prior to that, I was actually project manager for the Adopter River program, where I was also collecting information on plastics and water conservation. Um, so the journey towards, um, you know, getting to the point of being able to handle plastic pollution really started for me about five or six years ago. Um, and it has been a very, um, very interesting one, um, very engaging. So we've had a lot of different methodologies of, of um, dealing with plastic and plastic waste um, that we've looked at developing um, over the past five to six years. How bad is our plastic waste problem? Okay, so um, actually, if you go back to the first slide, the first slide will tell you exactly how bad it is, which is, according to Millet et al., which was a, a paper um, presented um, or, or created in 2019, we estimate that annual imports of plastics is about 129, um, over 129,000 metric tons. Now that accounts for all the raw materials as well as finished products that come into Trinidad that are of plastics. Now, um, in terms of that 129, only about 6,000 metric tons is actually exported in products. That might be, for example, the exportation of bottled water to countries of, of the islands. So most of that material goes into manufacturing, into our consumption. And after we use the um, 123,000 metric tons of plastics, what we tend to do is we dispose of it in our landfills as well as in our environment. So it's estimated about 123,000 metric tons of plastics ends up in, in landfills and environment. So we need to engage more activities in order to be able to remove these and, and um, remove the threat of plastic pollution. Now, fortunately, um, I have to say that uh, we have the IKEA program, which runs in conjunction with SwimCall. And I'm very happy to, to report that over the past five years, IKEA has been able to probably address about 4% of that 123,000 metric tons that ends up in the environment. And I mean, a little goes a long way. So we have mm -hmm. to give kudos to IKEA and SwimCall for the work that been, they've been doing in addressing that. But we need more initiatives. And that's where Flying Tree and their relationship with Milagros comes into play because they have been able to find a solution to the pollution. And if we were to support um, IKEA and SwimCall, we would be supporting the, the solution that um, Milagros and Flying Tree have what, found. What does that support look like? Okay, so that support means, and this is me plugging here, for a national drive for Trinidadians, please donate or um, deposit your plastics into the IKEA and swim call system. Now, bins have been installed um, across Trinidad and Tobago. We have them in most supermarkets, but also in the secondary schools. And if you were to donate or uh, deposit your plastics at the IKEA bins, they're taken to swim call who basically separates them. And most of that plastic that can be recycled is actually shipped away to do so. And the rest of that plastic is now accessible 
to organizations like Flying Tree um, that will now convert that into plastic lumber. So the best way to be a rep responsible citizen is to donate your plastics to eye care and swim call. And when we talk about when that plastic um, ends up at, um, at eye care and swim call and, and Flying Tree takes it, they basically what we call upcycle the plastic into products. Now, upcycling, just as one indicated, basically is a process of converting the plastic, uh, waste plastic, dirty plastic, into two products. And we can either chip it and trap it in concrete, in concrete products, or we can um, heat it and extrude it or squeeze it through a mold and make it into lumber. Now, we've actually had exceptional successes with the concrete products as well as the lumber in the facility that, that one has indicated. Now, um, mm -hmm. there's also a facility in Roxborough, um, in Tobago. Both facilities um, are able to now produce products and are um, also empowering community members. This is a women's group in Kernahan as well as a youth group in Roxborough. This, these facilities are now empowering those persons to be able to access a livelihood opportunities from the development and sale of concrete yeah. um, Doc, uh, sequestered products. Doc, what about, what about the, the safety factors? Uh, is, there, is it safer for us to be using lumber made out of plastic rather than real wood that, that we know catches a fire? Or does it, is it more difficult for the plastic to catch a fire? Or is it anything that makes it safer than, than the other stuff? Okay, so in terms of wood, um, uh, it's comparable to wood um, in terms of its um, uh, flammability and, and, and characteristics. It is, however, more long lasting than wood. Uh -huh. In terms of a fire, of course, it depends on the type of fire and you know the heat of the fire, etc. So it's difficult to give you a, a, an exact answer in terms of is the wood necessarily safer? Um, is the plastic lumber necessarily safer? But what could be said is that it, it is definitely more long lasting. We know that for sure. Um, as well as just versatile, it uh, is as durable as wood, or maybe even a, a more durable because, of course, wood will you know succumb to termites and rot and on all of these other things. Yeah. So it, I is can't it answer expensive? directly. Is it more the, expensive? The, the safety issue. What's that? Is it more expensive? No, actually, it's not. Um, it is actually cheaper or comparable to wood, depending on, on co of course, on the supply of the plastics, which is why right. we need to plug for, um, you know, more and more people donating their plastics to the eye, eye care system. All right. So, Doc, tell me the truth. What do we really need for Trinidad and Tobago to be able to move forward and, and do better when it comes to recycling, upcycling and repurposing? We need for people to donate their plastics to eye care and some call, honestly. If, if more plastics got into their system, then more um, then we have them already sorted in such a way that anybody who wishes to do any processing subsequently of the dirty plastics that can't be um, you know, reprocessed into other bottles, um, those dirty plastics can go into the lumber and the concrete um, products. Now, what the, uh, we, have, uh, we have other initiatives in terms of being able to use um, waste plastics. For example, we have the conversion of plastics into prosthetics for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. That is a project um, being run by the University of the West Indies. And um, they are taking HDB PE plastics, which is, um, you know, bottle caps, right? So they're taking bottle caps and converting those into prosthetics. So I have another slide. But at, at, at the end of the day, the ability to convert um, plastics into any usable product, whether it be concrete products, plastic lumber, or even prosthetics for persons with disabilities, it comes back to people of Trinidad and Tobago. We need you to dis, um, deposit your plastics into an IKEA and a swim call bill. And if you do that, then you're basically solving or, 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 or helping to solve the problem of pollution in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dr. Mahabir. And I want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. I understand today's your birthday. Of course, thanks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I do hope that you have a great day today. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Take for care, enjoy the rest me. of your day. All right, bye, Kimberly, bye, Rokas. <laughs> no problem. Bye, Dr. Mahabir.
That's Dr. Shada Mahabir celebrating her birthday today, but she's a national coordinator for the Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program in Trinidad and Tobago, UNDP. Now, for me, Kimberly, it's very, very interesting to learn about some of these things. I didn't know that we're making wood here in Trinidad and Tobago out of plastics. Out and of plastic. If that's the motivation for you to go and separate your plastics into your plastics and your other waste, you know, to be able yeah. to drop it off for the IKEA, at the IKEA bins. I don't know what would motivate you. If, exactly. If and I mean, I think we were talking about that this morning, right, in terms of the, the thrust that Swim Call has mm -hmm. to really, you know, get these, uh, to get people to, you know, donate their recyclables. I love that she also mentioned that, you know, they are at certain um, supermarkets, because I know this morning we were talking in terms of access. Yeah. So I think it's important that people know, you know, at certain supermarkets you can go, you can you know, donate your recyclables, and we could do amazing things with it. Definitely. So big up to IKEA Swim Call and everybody who's been doing their part to make sure that our environment stays clean. You have your part to play as well. Simple separation is a good place to start, and don't litter. Easy peasy, right? You would think so.